It's the Corrado Lark. Corrado Lark. Corrado Lark. Nick has podcast channel. Yeah. 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 What? What? I mean. Pink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Corrado Lark Knitcast podcast channel of sorts. Today, actually, it's going to be a bit of an adventure to see that. I don't normally do these things in public, but I see people do it all the time in this knitting community, and I decided I could up that ante. You know how we can do that? We can take this Knitcast on the road. On the road. Welcome to Astoria. Okay. So the plan is, I need to get a haircut, and <laughs> I'm going to take y'all along with me, and on the way, I'm going to avoid any cars, I'm going to be very safe, but I have a backpack full of knitwear I'm going to share with you. I'm trying not to get any like, like, I just kind of want to like, I don't want to ask like waivers, is that a thing? Is that a thing for podcasts? Anyway, I figured we'd start off with what I'm wearing today. A button-down shirt, some pants, and a scarf, a shawl. Scarf, shawl. Okay, we're crossing the street. Be very careful. See, this is it. Wow, looking good, Corrado Lark, right? <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, this is actually an unreleased pattern as of right now. The Geo Deco scarf or shawl. I haven't really decided what I think it is. I feel like it's a shawl, really, but it does wear like a scarf. It's like a decent length. Yeah, all the angles. Whoa, sorry. Um, so <laughs> this is in Yagageni Woolly Yak. Uh, if you've ever used it, it's really pretty. It's really nice to work with. Uh, it's held double through most of this here. Yeah, and there's some striping. You know what? I think it's time for our little, our first stop. So the plan is, anytime I talk about a different knitwear thing, I'm gonna like stop and like show you it somehow on the street. <laughs> okay, I think I figured out where I can put the camera. Probably gonna be looking at nothing for like a minute and a second. One second. Whoa, just the eyes and this Deco. So there's the long side, there's some stripes. You can see it in the light, some natural lighting and wind, so you can't really see because the shadows, but it's okay. So this is unreleased Yakkeri Woolly Yak. So it's a yak yarn, held double. It's mostly stripes and then this like twisted ribbing. And then at the end, it has a fade. Whoa, the fade at the end. Uh, the name comes from Geodude the Pokemon. Yep, colors, I mean. And then uh, Deco is like the striping, so like Art Deco. Whoa, the wind's gonna blow the camera. It's like that crazy today. This is quite the adventure. I don't think the podcasters be ready. I don't think you'd be ready. Anyway. Anyway, guys, I thought I would do this part. I've been thinking about this. I was taking a shower and I thought about this. I was like, so you know, guys, subscribe. Press the like button if you want to see more of these Corrado Lark adventures. Do it now, before the video ends. If you do it, I will show you more knitwear. You're going to see that either way. Oh, yep, we're good. Everything's good. Okay, sure hope this is recording right. I wanted to just get moving, but that was the first Geodeco. I need my bag. I have a second one. Here we go, right here. So let's put that in. This is the other thing. I was trying to figure out logistically how like I would keep track of what I've talked about in the bag. Because this bag's full. I mean it's kind of a bit of a walk to the barber. I found this barber. Does a good job. My roommate started going to him too. But it's over by Broadway. And I live by Ditmars. It's a hike. Anyway, so here's the other Geodeco. 
see that? So this is a uh, uh, Carrie actually knit this one herself. She dyed all the yarn of Yakageni. Um, and there's an alternate. If you you would notice if like you know I took the time to show you both, but uh, the ribbing in hers matches like symmetrically basically, and mine um, reverses. I put both in the pattern basically. It was really a tech editing error or a tech like a technical error that I realized in testing. So, it looks good either way. So anyway, there's this one. Maybe I'll put it on. Maybe not not crazy. This wind today. It was windy yesterday. Today is November first. There you go. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty quick. It's an easy easy shape to wear. Um, you need it on the diagonal. See, it's like you're casting on every. No. Oh no. That probably was the sound. I hope we're back. I'm gonna test to see if that worked. Then we'll continue. We're back. I probably should have like looked in my bag before I brought the camera back on, but I didn't. I just made sure that the sound worked. It worked. Oh, it's in T. Parking right in front of me. Why, why the run? Okay, so since we're stopped here anyway, even though I'm probably gonna have to cross any minute. Yeah, I'm crossing right now. Never mind. Safely crossing. Okay, so now we're in a place where I can take out another knit quickly. So this was the, uh, my most recently released pattern. Uh, it was actually a collaboration with one of my favorites. Hold. <laughs> this is kind of crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it's one of my uh, favorites, Asylum Fibers, and one of my new close knitting friends, Michelle of 144 Stitches. I'm gonna put my bag back on while I'm hiding a knit under my elbow see okay so this is uh my most released little shawl shawlette and then there's actually a large size so it is a shawl with a small size it's kind of like a shawlette like all these like knitting labels guys knitting labels anyway <laughs> i'm currently crossing a highway i don't know if you could tell by the sounds probably there's some people. Oh, oh, we're gonna cross the street real quick too. Da, 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 da. Another look at the uh, second sample of Geodeco. Close and personal. Yeah. I mean, like, to all anyone knows, I'm really just like talking on the phone with someone, right? I'm not just recording a video for myself or anything. And for you. Anyway, I, I feel like I'm just looking at myself, not the camera, sorry. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna find our next little pit stop and I'm going to show you the shawl but let's take a look at the color it's beautiful so for this one I kind of sent a color ideas to Stephanie of Asylum because I knew she would do really great with these three it's three different skeins um, asylum fibers and three different weights so it's the brainless bulky for the green it is colorway uh, this is a kit that's available on Stitch and Hustle blog anyway so green it is like Yoda, you're welcome. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, and then, what is it? The Errant Aaron base, which is the like Aaron weight. Um, that one is in Trickery, which is an existing colorway of hers. Or because it was just like Halloween, even though I hear we're moving on to Christmas already, whatever. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It's not on the news, I see, no, Facebook. Totally different, not the news. Continue. <laughs> uh, and then the blue color is Force of Blue, um, which is like, you know, Force. And the actual shawl is the Light Speed shawl. So, it is like this it is a skinny triangle. Uh, on the bias, this is a free and purchase available pattern on Stitch and Hustle blog, the light speed shawl. Uh, all it is is stripes and mesh, and then you're just, you're playing with three different bases to get this like crazy three-dimensional texture. So I'll show you how I like to wear it. I like to lay it over one side like that, and then wrap this skinny end, 
and then like, wait, that wasn't right. Ah. It was this way. So we're at the bottom up. And still, you lay this like longer side over your shoulder and then wrap around and it wraps like a scarf. I also have a really cool cuff that I got. Um, uh, I got from Chelsea Yarns and it just like clasps here. So it keeps it on. I wore this at Indie Untangled a few weeks ago at the New York Sheep and Woolish Festival, like Rhinebeck weekend. It was pretty awesome. So anyway, uh, before I get to that, light speed shawl, uh, kits available, stitch and hustle. Um, i trying to think what else is about that. This is a really fun quick knit. It took me like probably a week to knit it and you know, a little bit of before that to conceptualize the design. I'm doing that these days thinking about it before I just cast on. I always did, but you know what I mean. I like swatch even now. Oh, how the times have changed. I don't know, let's take this one off because there's gonna be another one that's gonna come on. Okay, next. Here we go. We're just gonna take it out. Take that out and get it ready. Someone just got in a car. Busy life here in New York City. Beans. Someone's gonna totally be able to figure out like exactly where I live. I mean, I basically said it in the beginning of the video, didn't I? Oh well. Cool. Okay, so here we go. Um, Indian Tangle, we'll talk about that for a little bit. Uh, basically, uh, Lisa had asked me to, like, I had volunteered the year before, and uh, oh, there's gonna be a road closure. Okay. Okay, I gotta focus for the road closure. No, it's fine. I just have to cross the street. Um, which I'm going to do safely. There's a car coming, so I'm not going to go. It's one of those box cars. Really boxy. Let's see if this side of the street's even open. There's all sorts of construction. Okay. So basically, I, uh, I worked at Indian Tangle this year, and I was like the... I put it as like the MC. It kind of just happened. I was really just like the a volunteer coordinator. And in the end, that turned into me <laughs> running the microphone. So if anyone that was there probably got to hear my shenanigans. Oh, people are crossing. We're going to get to like a busier area in a second. It's going to be real fun for this. Maybe we'll just people watch. And I'll just tell a story. I think that sounds great. It'll get quieter in the neighborhood. Okay. So uh, I basically emceed at the event. So like whenever someone's car was like we needed to move it. It's only happened a couple times, but it was like me on the on the microphone going, with the no no car with license plate F C E N. Please go to the front. Your car will be towed. That kind of thing. But what was really fun is at the end of the sessions, it's getting really loud. I have noise canceling headphones, so it works out. The generator, because I know you want to know what it is. A, lot, a day in the life. Ah. Okay, stuck my tongue out really close to the camera. You're welcome. So the really fun part was at the end of each session, because how Indie Untangled works, and there's like all these, you know, indie yarn vendors, and so really, you know, great marketplace. But you have two hour sessions, and there's I think four or five of them through the day. And so what I would do is like before I'd be like, you have a half hour left, and you have 15 minutes left, and then, ended up singing like a goodbye song. That's just how it goes. So like, I definitely sang Bye 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 by NSYNC. And then we wrote a little parody, me and Stephanie of the Silent Vibers to So Long Farewell from Sound of Music. That one got applause, it was kind of cool. It's weird, this like mashup between my old life as an actor and a singer, and then this new life as like a knitwear designer and the correlations that oddly exist. They're there. Oh, I should also notice, from my days doing background work, this white shirt right here is a problem. I'm wearing it because, as I mentioned, the whole point of this trip is to go get a haircut. <laughs> and I also don't have a selfie stick. Just notice that. People do that, don't they? Not just hold it. Oh, well, not my podcast. Maybe next time. Okay, so... We're singing a parody, it's really great. And the correlations between that and this white shirt, that's where we were. 
the white shirt. Uh, basically, this little bit will show up in like the old scenes with Batman work. So like I've done a bunch of shows like the Marvel Six. I worked in Gotham as core for a bit. I recently had a little spot on Younger. Oh, I'm going this way. Turn. It's gonna be busy again. Across the Steinway. Steinway. You can see I really need that haircut. <laughs> I'm weird. Uh, okay. So when you had these white shirts, you always wore an undershirt but it, you needed to make sure it did not poke above. So you needed like a big open one. But because I'm getting a haircut, I don't want to ruin this really nice shirt that I have on that I wore for you. I would like to take that off, keep my white shirt on, get my haircut, and then maybe I'll figure out a way to like show you what the haircut looks like in the end. Maybe with just the white shirt, but it won't look as nice. And you head up, I'll look nicer but head down, I'll be wearing a white shirt. Okay. Oh, we're gonna stop. Okay, so here we are. This is an upcoming design. Um, I've been testing it for a while. It was honestly um, one of my more advanced shawls that I've done. Um, it was with Shirsty Cat Designs. She, uh, she sent me some, or gave me some of her mohair DK, which is really cool. I mean, it's like totally, it's just different to of using mohair that, you know, it's basically like holding a sport weight and a mohair strand together, which I even like have that written in the pattern basically. Uh, but you use that and you, it's a lot of alternating that with a sport weight BFL that she has. So this is the final project, her final product. This beautiful, it was folded in my bag and everything. Beautiful shawl. Um, you can see that fuzz. Yeah, but the lighting's kind of working here. You know, this like walking while you're doing a podcast thing gives you some pretty great lighting. Let's make this light. Let's be safe. But across the street. Okay. Steinway, y'all. Let's give you a view. Notice there's cars. Lots of cars. Okay. If you wrap it around your hand, it's like, I don't know. It's not something you do. I guess you could pin it that way if you would like want to put an ice pack in it to, for your hand. I don't know. Okay. Once I cross this little corner, I'm going to give you a more up close look at the whole shawl together. But uh, you basically, there's three different things that you do. You're casting on and then building a triangle. And then like, so you increase and then you decrease the triangle. And then you do that again while it's still like to get held together. And then you pick up in the middle of the two and you decrease. And what that does is give you like a trapezoid. And then you pick up one of the ends and you do short rows to till you have no more yarn left. That's where you're at. You know? Easy. Oh, this is fun. I think I may have done a wrong turn. That's okay. This is gonna work. We're good. Go. So, it like, actually, I think I wore this shirt in the photo shoot. I'm working with a new photographer. Her name's Katuska. Uh, you may have met her, you may have seen her around. Her name's, her Instagram handle is Between the Stitches, or Between These Stitches. She's about to premiere an audio podcast that I actually, uh, I did an episode with. So she interviewed me for, or talked about some things, some knitting things, good time. I don't know, okay. I mean, really, do you need to see, do you need any more? Like, it looks pretty great, huh? I actually really love these colors. It's not super in my wheelhouse, like this like pinkyish tone. I don't tend to do as much of, but, Came together really nice and actually this wind's a little chilly and this shawl is very warm so the story with the shawl is i ended up doing it over a period of time i think it took me it was over like six months but i just like i would get to a point and i was like okay i know what i want to do so i want to really map that out first so i did that and i would pick it up and do the part and then short rows 
Once I finished. finished it, I looked at the pattern and I went, oh, my row numbers are wrong. It took too long writing the pattern, basically. So, tech testing has been an interesting process. I've been working with one of my good uh, friends and test knitters, Emily, who lives in Spain. Uh, she's amazing. She actually knit this herself now. I sent her yarn for it. Uh, it's um, La Bien Ami single. And then I think I sent some chain fibers. It's kind of funny. She's in Europe and I'm in America. Did I sent her European yarn? She sent me European yarn. Okay. okay. So there's more construction. Welcome to Astoria. <laughs> We're just going to keep going. Um, Oh, that's where I'm supposed to be. Hmm. Hmm. Not going that way. This stuff me off. Can you hear me? Good. So here we go. Okay, so this is the shawl here. Let's see. I need to find the ledge. There's somewhere I can like put this down and show you the entirety of the beauty of this one. Ah, it's actually been a beautiful fall here. Overall, there's not been too much rain. We had a little rain the past couple of days. Here we go. Okay, I'm not gonna go too far. Sure. Okay, so, as I was saying, <laughs> you start here, you build this triangle and decrease. Uh-huh. Decrease. Then you increase again. And you decrease. Then, taking these two points here, you pick up the whole middle and then decrease in. If that's technically the right side, it doesn't matter to versatile. Maybe I should talk louder. It's probably gonna be horribly so horrible sounding. All this construction. And then you do these short rows at the end just to give it enough length uh, and as long as you have yarn. So if you do this in like a fingering weight, you might have a few more short rows. Um, it's, it's not like a, it, it's an interesting repeat. It's not super simple. Look at that back part. It, it's an interesting repeat. It's not, I do that for a living. Okay, let's move on. So before we move on, let's go right back. Where were we? We're not moving on. We're putting this away. Okay. Oh God. Wanna let you know that this uh, bag is absolutely less than 20 pounds. For legal reasons, don't ask. <laughs> okay, I wanna make sure I've gotten all my, my newer FOs out of the way. I have. So now I'm gonna go into um, two of my release patterns from this year that I basically, um, I don't think I podcast about because it's been so long since I've done a podcast. And the first one, let's take them. No, they're, they're not together. I was like, I'll wear them together. I'm not gonna wear them together. So this one is one of three designs I have done with the Fiberists. Uh, this is the first one that's been released. I have one that's upcoming for Vogue Knitting Live, their, their booth, we're gonna premiere it there. Um, that'll come up for them. <laughs> and I mean, should I drop it now? Not kneeling on the floor of New York City. <laughs> uh, so I've done, basically I've done three patterns with them. One of them's a whip that I'll show you. One of them's in my hand and finished. And the other one is my first sweater. So I'm real excited about that. Probably can't hear any of this. Let me test the sound, see how this is sounding. Okay, go back. They're not hot. Structure words are supposed to be hot. The best the thing is, you can hear me better than I can hear myself. That's why I tested it out. Okay. We're back on the path that we meant to be on. We meant to be on English. So uh, this is the pattern I was about to talk about. It's called Rep on Ice, a reference to Reptar on Ice, 
which is a Rugrats reference. Because yes, I grew up watching that. Okay, so <laughs> Red Bot Eyes. Uh, it's this, it looks kind of like a hat. It's actually, you knit it like a cowl. See the opening here. And have a button that I can like close it up with and turn this cowl into a hat. You, you pick up the inside and let me just show you that part. Because that's the really cool part. Oh no! This is my sound, right? Okay, great. Well, this is a bad spot for this, but here we are. Rep on ice, so this is the outside. It's a double knitting with uh, lace mohair nylon. Now, the mohair nylon base is something that, I, as far as I've seen, it's only been in their booth, or uh, I don't even think it's actually been in their booth at this point. Um, they just kind of gave me a few skeins last year and I've been using it everywhere because I'm obsessed with it. The, the color you get out of it's really cool. Unlike other mohairs, it's just more saturated. I think the nylon. And then also, I'll show you in the other design that I have with it, how miraculous that is. You can knit like a hat and it has the bounce of nylon in it. So it's like a, you know, like a sock weight hat when you double it. Stay tuned. Okay, here, I'm gonna wear it. Now, Neon green always blows out when you put it on a camera. I like wearing my hats a little closer to my forehead. I don't think hats really, in particular, look great on me in general, but there we are. So that's it as a hat. I'm not gonna take it apart as a cowl at the moment. It does come apart um, very easily with the button. I just, I never really wear it as a cowl. I wear it as a hat. It's super warm and it's not cool enough for this particular item. The shawl, I was like, this is great, because it was like wind and whatever, but now I'm in the sun somehow. I think I'm supposed to turn on this street. I think we're like getting close to the actual haircut, which means I may have to film more after the haircut. Wow, we had that much more to talk about. It's been a while. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, we definitely have more to talk about close and personal Robert's face. You missed it, didn't you? <laughs> nope. Nope. Okay, so I think I'm gonna try and talk to these about these next two before I get to the haircut, and then I'll finish up with whips after that. So this one I released, uh, I wanna say spring, late winter, somewhere around then. I released an ebook of shawl patterns. Um, and so this is the primarial shawl um, right here. I know. Primarial. So this is with Murky Depths dyes. Three of her single plies. Oh gosh, the colorways. I want to say turmeric is the yellow. I'm really bad with colorway names usually. I only know the kit one because it's a kit and you know, but I'd love to do a kit with this. Hit me up, Dad. Anyway, okay. Let's see if I can, I'm gonna have to put it down again just to, ooh, I found a tree. Then I can put it in a tree. We'll have like this cool, like, through the tree look. No, you can't see anything. <laughs> there. Now this is, this is when we're getting real fun. Perfect, right? Which one, oh, that's this. Hmm. Maybe if I go this way, you're gonna be upside down. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Next, next, next spot. Okay, we still have another like street. Look at my hair, it's everywhere. Okay. So this is the Primarly shawl. Uh, it's marling, held single. You have all this like textured lace going on. You have two sections of short rows. Um, it's actually, it, it looks more complicated than it is. There's some slip sti slipping stitches and like wrapping, which is actually my favorite part. Where is it? Huh, right here. That row. You see how that's, that's twisted stitches, but you wrap yarn around it that you don't actually ever knit into it. Good stuff. Wears really easy, this one. 
I need to put you down so I can just throw it on quick and then I'll put it away and go to the next one, get a haircut, and then we'll talk again. Yeah, it's right here in the mailbox. That's where you are now. Okay. So, oh, no, not good. Great, better. Hi, Mario. The sun. I block the sun on that bit. <laughs> Uh, and there's the short row that I was talking about. And he wears super easy, it's like a triangle shell. Um, this texture, these texture stitches like bubble out a little, which actually gives you like this, it makes it look very drapey. So that's what, yeah. It's fun, it's, you know, marling three different colors. I used red, yellow, blue, essentially. The red's a little orangey. Um, which gives it that more yellowish tone, I think. So it's a little more yellow. And then like even the blue has some like, you know, when you mix it with the yellow, it gets very green. Yellowy green, that's the point that I'm making. Cool. Okay, so the next one, I just bound off my needles, haven't woven in any ends. And it's a little cowl, which it's interesting because I was like, I, I ended up, I bought this jacket for my next photo shoot. Or next pictures that you'll see. And it's this like very blue, like a vibrant -y blue. And I was looking at my stash and I don't have much yellow. I don't really work with too much yellow overall. Um, more green, it seems. Ooh, that's not good. My shawl got caught. Adventures. Okay. Nope. One second. Welcome to the street. Do you like it? You want to live in Astoria too? You can move here. I don't know. One second. Okay. So I ended up knitting this cowl for a jacket that I was going to wear on this video, but I thought it was too warm. Not very back, good background acting. Is there someone walking towards us back? I don't know. So here it is. This is in Hello Mellow hand spun. Um, this is really simple. It's just some twisted stitches, some pearls, um, basically some ribbing. And it mimics like some early Corrado Lark designs. If you remember like Bray Ocean Marl Cowl or Twist and Seed, um, where it's just like very simple sort of texture that you get. But this one's also reversible. I guess a lot of them are too. So yes, that's still more Colorado or Cowl life. That's the other side. Um, for wearing, personally, I do have a preference. I have only found this off a couple days ago. I feel like it's getting harder. <laughs> okay. I just like wearing it the regular way out that you knit it. And let me take this off. So it's a beautiful yellow. Again, in my ends. Um, and it's, I believe, her Hello Mellow Handspun Cormo DK. I have to check the tag. Um, but it, so far, I've been like, yeah. I like that. I didn't think I could really pull off that much yellow, but I guess I can. Someone's lifting a ladder on the street in front of us. Hmm. Oh, no. oh, okay. Well, I'm going to check this light. Maybe replace this light. I'm going to try and cross the street. <laughs> yeah, let's do that quick. in front of a car. Oh look, there's plenty of time. Still hasn't even made it. We're good. So yeah, this yellow, right? She has really fun neons in like more natural or more, um, you know, farm to table wool. <laughs> so I was just gonna put it, how do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's this beautiful Cormo. It's really warm and soft, very, very soft. I know a lot of people knit sweaters out of this, AKA, hasn't happened yet, Heather. We want to do a sweater together. A sweater. 
She also helped style all my, my uh, photo shoots. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. Like this shirt she helped pick out. If you like that shirt, comment below. No. Okay, so I'm about to get to my haircut. Uh, I'm gonna stop this video. When you see me again, this beard's gonna not look like that. This hair's gonna be short. We're gonna look good. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Nope, didn't get it done. He uh, wasn't there. So wait till 12.30. That's like a half hour. Do I trust it? I don't trust it. Do I really want to wait there for a half hour? No. Am I just going to trim my beard? Slick my hair back? Yes. I was trying to get a haircut for an event tonight. Um, it's the Life Patterns premiere by Tim Kelly, Tim Kelly Art on Instagram. He uh, basically interviewed, I wanna say 36 uh, knitting community members. And just, you know, for like, I don't know, half hour, hour each, um, basically asked them to sort of, sort of teach him a stitch or how they like to work things in their knitting or crochet life. And then he ended up knitting a swatch for each of them. And then he's also a, mainly a painter, installation artist and such. But so he painted a painting based on each swatch that he did. So that's what, 36 swatches, 36 picture paintings. It's gonna be a good night. A whole bunch of people will be there. Okay, this white shirt isn't horrible, but probably should have fixed it before I got back on camera. Probably should have called the barber before I went. It's not like the worst thing. I, mean, I didn't do anything with it. I can probably clean that up, right? Clean that up. Clean it up. We'll see what I can do. Try not to look crazy. Great. Looks great. Make sure I didn't step in like dog poop. I'm gonna, like check that as I walk around New York City. It's you know one of my things. Let's put you right here. We get dressed. It's beautiful out. Everything's great. Which shawl should I wear on the way home? Because I'm basically gonna wear that the rest of the time. I'm kind of feeling the cowl. Like, it's kind of into that. Stream of consciousness. Crotto lark. Walks. Knits and tries to get a haircut. <laughs> uh, that's a good title, right? That's, that's a winner. No, I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say winner, winner, chicken, not Guy Fieri. Like, can I hide these long ends? I don't wanna, I don't need these ends to be this long. Like, I don't know why they are this long. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, now I put it over the cord. But yeah, it's kind of cute. Okay. Now we're getting into whips. So let's see what's this one. Sure. Um, one thing I realized when I was trying to do this is I do not have a very good collection of project bags. I, I mean, I have a good collection of them, but they're all like the canvas ones or ones from knitting stores, which is great. It's just, you know, I don't have like the fancy ones. Dang, this cow looks good. Anyway. Oh, before I even forget. So the reason that this pattern may be a little delayed is I'm working to adapt it to be also an infinity scarf pattern and also to have a hat that matches. I have two other skeins of uh, Heather Mellow's DK. So I figured I'll do that one with each and there'll all be one skein projects i'll release it i believe working title is crown it that's right bring it okay so this one now whips are going to be fun as i walk right like how do you even do that i don't know Let's figure it out there's a baby coming well a stroller three older people in a stroller though you never know what that is anymore. could just be a grandchild Definitely just a grandchild. Can you speak in Italian? 
I don't speak Italian, so I don't really know. So let's drop you down and then we'll take out the whip. So this is in Wolf Oak Tove DK. Um, here we are. So it's this like really fun textured, um, mostly garter, a little bit of eyelets, a little bit of pearls, and then this uh, pearl texture. I think this is actually coming out pretty nicely on camera in this spot. And just a few stripes to bring you back into that same repeat. But the fun part's gonna come right when I finish this and I'm almost there. I'm gonna do this again. And it's going to either, I haven't decided, <laughs> this hand Corrado Lark podcast at his crotch. Uh, so <laughs> uh, it's either going to be this textured part for a section this wide, like this wide at the other end in this color, or it'll be this texture in this color but for that wide at the end. So it'll basically be like two different colors merging to form two different ends of a shawl. So if that guy were doing background acting, if you didn't hear me, okay, great. If that guy were doing background acting, we'd be like, okay, you gotta move faster than that. And like the PA would be like, you know, or they'd put him towards the end, put a big coat on him, really hide him. That was just bad background acting. I mean, at least he didn't look in the camera. That's always fun. It's fun to watch the background actors like either look into the camera or fall asleep in courtroom scenes. My mom watches a lot of Law and Order. I'm sure she sees it all the time. I was like making sure I have all this whip together. I was like, what if I just like left a trail of yarn for that whole thing? Where can I put this down? Maybe here? We'll see. I gotta put this away. Is that gonna work? Yeah, that'll work. So yeah, so this is, uh, I haven't exactly, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, I haven't exactly found a name for it yet. <sighs> I don't know. It was originally truthfully, that was sort of basically an entirely different pattern that I had knit in this yarn but I didn't end up liking it. So I ripped it all back and started a whole new pattern. That's been happening to me a lot. Not a lot, every once in a while. All the way here, because it's a good spot. This cow looks great. <laughs> Let's take out another one here. Let's see, what's next? Uh, that one, sure. And then I think I only have one more thing. Unless I missed something. Just don't think I did. Okay, so this is the other design. Oh God, that hurt. Okay. We're good. This is in this cute project bag that Sherry and her mom, Nan, as they call her, we all call her, she embroidered the C. And it's this little like over the arm carrier. So I can actually knit and walk with this. I cannot knit, walk, and board. That is much harder. I'm going a totally different way back. Because whatever. Doesn't matter. It's a grid. New York. New York. It's really bad. Perfect. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna show you here. Oh, oh, that little, that little bit of sun in the corner is beautiful. Right next to the sign. What's going on here? Speaking of New York. <laughs> so this is in the fibrous mohair nylon. So I get to show you the yarn pretty up close and personal. Let's see if I can get rid of the glare. I mean, do you see that? The orange saturation is unreal. It's got this little tinge of like a reddy orange, reddish. Uh, and so, I'm working on this hat. I really wanted like a super slouchy, big hat. And so I doubled the mohair nylon. And I did a swatch and so before I started this. And here we are. Again, the glare in this isn't the best spot, but 
I mean, it's kind of angelic looking, isn't it? That little, that little sunny mist. It's just blowing out though. Okay, great. There you go, a little better. See that? So, it's a reversible, uh, doubled mohair nylon hat. Um, super, like, could fit these headphones almost in it. Wow, that looks great. What do you think? No, not going to work. Let's take the headphones off, and I'm not about to do that. Got this really cute little black stitch marker, triangle. Got that at Rhinebeck last year. Yeah, she from Wolf. Um, really, I wanted something that would take longer in a hat, like a, a little more substantial of a knit than a quick knit. So I um, went with this on US 2s and 3s. My favorite, maybe no one else's, but my favorite. Um, and you get, because you get this like fabric that's not, like it's knitting. Like if someone else sees it, they don't think that I did that, you know what I mean? That's good background acting. Okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> this is gonna be something, something else, right? Y'all are probably gonna want to see more of this kind of stuff. Here's all I'm gonna say is, in the winter, I'll go out and do it once, maybe. Like real heavy snow, and we'll try and do this. No, we're not doing it. I have been trying to get to podcasting again, and so I just had this idea that I went, you know what? We'll kill two birds with one stone. That didn't happen. That I just killed one stone. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm getting to the last thing, and then we're gonna sign off. Oh no. I literally had to stomp it with my foot. Do you see that? See that action? Right there. That is how I kept that from going away. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. So this is, um, ooh, well, I was supposed to look this up before I filmed anything. I got asked, I've been asked by a couple of people this year to do some free patterns or patterns that donate money to some good causes. Um, I can't really talk about one of them. Uh, and the other one is this hat. I can't honestly remember which cause. Helping hands, I wanna say. Helping hands. I got asked to design a pattern that I would release for free for them. And I've been working pretty hard on it. I thought it would be an easy... We're back on Steinway, by the way. Doritos. It's like my addiction. Okay, I can't stop with that so I don't buy them. Don't put them near me. Uh, so, I'll get to a fire before I really show you. I think it was Helping Hands that asked me to do it. Um, and I started this design that was like, oh, that'd be super simple, but like nice, different. Something that not everyone has done, but they'd all have the capability of doing. Um, similar to like the light speed shawl. Um, some of my knits that are like that. This cow actually. So, uh... We're good? Good. Broken the street. Broken the street. People all around. They're probably taking that. They know. Okay. So... I ended up, like, getting to the decreases of the hat and going, Oh, yeah, that's not going to be just this simple decrease is it I had to figure out a different way to to maneuver the stitches so that it would be all right for the decreases um, and I'll talk about the yarn before you even seen it before you even see it one more street a lot of things going on one more street turn a right head back home use my trimmer make my face not my face I mean, no. Make my face more my face. Okay. Um, so I got asked, ooh, I don't know, three, four months ago now. It was height of summer, because I remember, because I was sweating profusely. <laughs> Not because the event was hot, because I was hot going to the event. Okay. I don't know what's going on behind me. And it was a Red Heart uh, launch for two of their new yarns. Um, one of them was really cool. It was like a finger looping yarn. So you can basically, I 
instead of actually using any needles or anything, you just use your hands. And so like using your full arm, it's, it's a similar concept. It makes a really cool fabric, almost like a bubble stitch. Looking thing, it was really cool. Um, but not exactly my realm of design. The other yarn on the other hand had one of my favorite colors, that like burgundy, burgundy like maroony thing. Everybody's cute dog. Yeah. You're welcome. Anyway. You are very welcome. <laughs> okay, so uh, the other yarn was Heat Wave, is what it's called. And it's uh, an acrylic, I believe acrylic or a polymide, 100%. But what it does, it's got, it's like a smart yarn, is how I think of it. When you put it out in the sun, it heats up. So I think it can get up to like five or 10 degrees, eight, 12. It gets warmer in the sun, y'all. So it almost acts like a wool, because you know how like a wool, if you're like in the sun, it gets warm in the coldest cooler, but acrylic doesn't really do that so much. Now it does. Okay, we're still on kind of a busier street, so I can't even really show you. But let's see, the event was really nice. I had a little wine. I got to talk with uh, Marley Bird, for sure. And then one of the guys, the crochet guys, I think. Um, you know, talk about what we do. I think they do more tutorials and stuff. And I would love to do tutorials, but uh, like knitting tutorials. But uh, I cut my fingernails, so that's one thing. One strike, and two strikes, as you may notice. My video quality life, I don't really care enough to have like a GoPro stick. Is that what they call it? I don't know what I'm Okay, real close. Okay, we're almost ready to cross. Sorry, we had to get off that street. Okay. So yeah, that was a fun event. I'm trying to think where else I've been. Um, I went to the Gigi birthday party this summer. That was really fun in Brooklyn at Felicia's house. Okay. Okay. Did I find it? No. No, that's not gonna work. <laughs> There's gonna be a whole like looper trail of me trying to put my camera places. Let's just go here. Here we go. It's been a lot of build up to this hat. Here's the yarn first. It's like, uh, not crazy, right? I know. I'm gonna. <laughs> it's a, like, uh, worsted ish weight. Um, very soft. Very soft acrylic y, polymide y. Oh no. Got it entangled in my. So here it is, I'm doing some magic loop to do the closure. Oh gosh, I dropped you. I didn't drop you, you just flipped over. This side's very sort of plain, but as you see, I'm not doing any ribbing. It's just this like garter, I call it like a garter fade. So you're fading out with more space in between, but it's, this is the front side of it. So it has a little more garter. Um, I think because it's on magic loop, I can wear it. Oh yeah, hold. Wow, looks great. It's peeking in here and in there. I don't know what was keep picking me up. Yeah, so it's like that. There we go, that lighting is better. So, that's like a, was supposed to be a little bit of a quicker knit than it was. I'm hoping to get that done in the next like week or so. Also, I can get the pattern edited <gasps> to get it in and sent over for a good cause. Um, yeah, so again, I'll have another one in Christmas uh, around the holiday season that's for a great cause. Uh, I think this comes out, I want to say, around that same time. I don't know. I should really double check with that. I'm trying to think. I have a lot, a lot coming up. As I said, uh, sweaters. 
sweaters have been big and I actually want to leave this video with this sort of question to anyone who gets to this part to answer if they know the answer. That'd be great. <laughs> um, <coughs> mm, okay. So I've been doing sweaters, uh, mostly raglans, top down, very simple. Um, what happened was I started with one pattern that I was trying to knit from and just like, okay, I want to learn how to do this. Let me do this very simple raglan pattern. It seemed nightmare. I, I knit, tried knitting it like three times. Turns out that it was some of the pattern's fault and some of my fault. You're learning, you know? But mostly the pattern, no, I'm just kidding. It's fine. Anyway. Okay, so <laughs> I ended up just casting on my own raglan because I had done at that point enough research to know what was going on and I did one. Uh, then I cast on another and I did another and now, for, and the first one, how I worked the short rows in the back, and my question's about short rows. How I worked the short rows in the back made the collar some, a very specific type of collar that actually is really cute on the sweater. So I kept it. The second one, I didn't put short rows in. Um, I really wanted to use like an increasing technique uh, instead of short rows, just to give me more room in that specific area of the like hump of the back back, neck, shoulder area, everyone's favorite. Um, and I, that work, one worked out perfectly fine. I, I think I am gonna end up writing a mini short row, like just a recommendation. If you want a perfect neckline, you might wanna add a couple of short rows, but the increasing works, works perfectly well. Then I went to cast on, I have two other sweaters going right now. And both of them, I'm trying to do short rows in the more traditional sense in the back where you, you know, you're working wide and in a little, just a couple, not too much. This is a 30th Avenue, by the way. 30th Avenue, New York. Well, Queens is 30th. Okay. <laughs> um, and what I'm getting is this little like bubble in the back of my, sh my, my sweaters. And two of them that I've done it with now in two different ways. Um, I went to block one of them the other day, two days ago, and I went to try it on yesterday and it still has this bubbling in the back. Um, I'm honestly a little embarrassed to show anyone, but if anyone knows why that would happen, and what I'm talking about in bubbling is like it, it bunches up, like right below the ribbing where the short rows are, instead of the short rows laying flat, um, it's bunching. I've looked up like the technique to pick up your wraps, because you know, you wrap and turn with the short rows. And, and when I'm picking up my wraps, I'm doing everything correctly. Um, the only thing I am maybe noticing is my wrap around that stitch before I pick it up is a little tight. So maybe that's why it's like puckering or something. Um, someone wants to like privately message me, I may be willing to show you a picture. But otherwise, my plan is just to do a lot more research and just figure it out myself because that's how I've always done my things with knitting. So we'll see. Okay. Let's just say, this has been really nice getting back to for a bit. I know it's been a kind of crazy, crazy wild ride. All about crazy wild ride with me here today. Probably not what you were expecting in the return of this Knitcast podcast channel. But it is what it is. It's been a great time. Again, if you want to see more like this, specifically the walking around, comment below. Um, if you really want to see more videos, just, just like the video or subscribe. Uh, I really would appreciate it. And that would like get me to do more. You know what I mean? It's like encouragement. I can encourage myself to do this clearly, but it helps if y'all help. <laughs> okay, with that, bye. You may hate me, but it ain't no lie. Bye, bye, bye. What are you looking at?